yet her body is thrust into a world of adult responsibilities. She wonders in her room, why must I grow up so fast? Like a flower blooming in a sudden storm, she finds herself caught between innocence and understanding, between the longing to remain a child and the inevitability of growing up. Why are their voices cast into the abyss of silence? Why are their cries swallowed by the void of neglect? From innocence lost in wisdom's embrace, we forge our own path. This, this is, is coming, coming of age. age. At the core of every woman's life cycle lies Menard, the first menstrual period in a female that symbolizes both fertility and resilience. It is a fundamental force, one that shapes not only societal dynamics but also individual health, a profound intersection of biology and culture. Yet, over the past few decades, research indicates a worrying trend. The age of Menarche is declining. In between 1980 and 2000, the average age of Menarche for Indian women was 13.49 years. A study conducted in 2016 to 17 Karnataka revealed that this age has dropped to 12.67 years. In modern times, girls are experiencing this milestone earlier. And the burning question is, why? To decode this enigma, we conducted a cross-sectional study among 769 adults and girls aged 10 to 18 in Falaknuma, Hyderabad. We aim to uncover what these young girls understand about their bodies and examine how they manage social, psychological and physical challenges brought about by this accelerated growth. Using a semi-structured questionnaire, we sought to explore the factors contributing to the earlier onset of Menard. The age of Menarche is not just a biological milestone. It is an indicator of societal, environmental, and lifestyle shifts. In our research population, a staggering 34.2% of girls experience this Menarche as early as 11 years old or even younger. Our research identifies key factors driving this trend. Perhaps the most concerning statistic is 27.1% of girls who experience early Menarche were overweight and 8.1% of them were obese. Thirty-eight percent of girls consume fast food more than four times a week and 54.7% drank sugary beverages with the same frequency. These dietary choices high in fat and calories increase the level of adipose tissue which in turn raises leptin levels. Leptin, known to accelerate the secretion of GnRH hormone, triggers early puberty. 40.7% of children who didn't actively participate in physical activities experience early menar. On contrast, 29.4% of girls who played regularly or frequently experience a conventional one. Highly signifying the uh, race relationship between physical activity with early menar. Among the participants, 33% reported more than 6 hours of screen time daily. 30.5% had 3 to 6 hours of sleep, far below the necessary rest for healthy development. Sleep deprivation decreases GABA inhibition, which in turn increases the release of stimulators such as glutamate, further speeding the onset of Menarche. A shocking 62.2% girls reported regular exposure to plastic. Chemicals like phthalates and bisphenol A used in plastic act as endocrine disruptors, hastening the arrival of Menarche. Today, we stand here to talk about more than just numbers or mere findings. We are here to give voice to the 61 million adolescent menstruating girls of India, many of whom are entering a world of adulthood before they are ready, caught in the swirl of early menarche. This shift is not without consequence. It brings with it the risk of both short and long-term health complication. From disruptive hormonal imbalances to devastating diseases like breast and endometrial cancers, the effects are nothing less than catastrophic, reaching far and wide casting shadows on lives of countless women. Early menarche not only impacts physical health but leaves deep psychological scars. 26% of the menstruated girls who are not yet started menstruating have no knowledge about menstruation, while some who have some knowledge about it obtain it through social media, a breeding ground for misinformation. 24.3% of prepubescent girls disagree to the statement it's normal for girls to menstruate, revealing a lack of familiarity among young minds on this important topic, once again pointing all the accusatory fingers towards social media. India, in all her might and glory, is a paradox when it comes to her thriving daughters. 
for centuries, Menarche has been celebrated through grand ceremonies where young girls are revered as they step into womanhood. Despite this reverence, cultural taboos and traditions shroud menstruation in shame and isolation. The celebration of femininity is juxtaposed with rituals that label menstruating women impure. Among the participants, 70.2% of population reported feeling of impurity and shame, reinforcing a stigma that has staggered our population through generations. These feelings are so deep-rooted that 71.3% of girls felt unable to perform optimally in school during menstruation and 57% found menstruating hard to manage altogether. This void in knowledge fosters anxiety, self-doubt and low self-esteem, isolating them at a time when they need our guidance and emotional support the most. And there is another layer, a subtle, often overlooked consequence of early men up. Research suggests that girls who mature earlier than their peers lead to romantic and sexual feelings before their peers. They, they confront adult emotions earlier. During our visit to school, we noticed ch children hesitated to discuss menstruation and surrounding conversation with their teachers as well as mothers. We observed an existing conversational gap between daughters and mothers. Limited parental involvement in schools has further widened this gap, hampering open communication and support. The State of Telangana Board introduces the topic of menstruation in Grade 8 under the heading of Menstruation and Meat briefly, limiting the timely knowledge of the changes in female body. Education should not only be culturally sensitive but also provide emotional and psychological support by providing timely accurate knowledge of the physical changes of the body. Addressing these concerns in partnership with already impactful pre-existing programs like Rashtra Kishore Swasti Karikram and Menstrual Hygiene Scheme by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare India, we propose to you our very own Sakhi Sahyogi. A biannual peer-led educational program which fosters open dialogue and learning not just for girls and boys about female body, menstruation and menstrual health but covering also their parents and educators all across the state. This initiative aims to educate, dispel myths surrounding Minnar led by educators from the same generation along with kids and their parents to ensure relatability and comfort among students. Key features of this program will include interactive and inclusive learning. Sakhi Sayogi will utilize creative and engaging forms encouraging participation through creative, competitive events and literary events. For all the children and their parents, focusing on bridging the conversational gap. This program will not only impact students, teachers and their parents, but also create job opportunities for medical undergraduates to contribute as educators and counsellors while providing them with experience in the field of health education. This isn't just a program, it's a promise to every young confused girl, helpless mother and unsure father that they won't face their struggles alone. We hear you and we stand with you. With early menarch, with early menarch on rise, we must educate and prioritize. Nutrition, health and open discussion, empowering girls, our strongest intention. Building a safe space for them is our plea. So she, she no, no more, more has, has to whisper, to whisper. I can stay free. I think it is very passionate. But I sometimes think that we make a mountain out of a molehill. Menstruation is a physiological process. It is not pathological. Rarely does it become pathological, okay? So, do you tell them that it is pretty physiological? Let me take you through the conundrum of uh, deliveries. Once upon a time, like in your grandparents' time, a, all deliveries happened at home. But we had maternal high, maternal mortality. To beat it, all deliveries are now institutionalized. 
So we have institutionalized a physiological event. Did you understand? So the state takes control of how your delivery should happen. And that's how the cesarean rate is shooting through the roof. Okay? So you must have recently read that on certain given day, 41 deliveries happened in a district hospital, which is their highest in a given day, out of which 31 are cesarean deliveries. That's not very great. So once you institutionalize any event, you should not create a, as if the state should manage everything. No, that's not the truth. You should empower women or girls to manage themselves. That is more important. It's more of an empowerment. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. I wish there were some boys amongst you to feel that there is no reason to be embarrassed. I'm very embarrassed when my own students don't do a pelvic examination. When we were trained, we were not distinguished by any of our patients whether I was a man or a woman to do a pelvic examination. That's how I learned. But nowadays, boys don't do pelvic examinations, even when they are oncologists, which is a disgrace. If you can't do a pelvic examination, you can't diagnose half the cancers in the body, at least in the lower half. So please empower them. That should be the message. Don't try to make it a disease. OK? Thank you so much, sir. So, so thank you for a nice presentation. I feel it's very relevant. And the questions you raised are still existing in this modern day society. So, an early menarche is a problem, and unless the school children are educated, and you have proposed a future, future model to do so, so I really appreciate, admire the presentation was excellent. Now, and I would also say there were some cat calls during your presentation. That shows that still education needs to be there in this hall as well. And unfortunately, see, we have a physiological event in boys also, Edrinard, which nobody talks, and there are no boys presenting it. So way to go, girls. Congratulations. Thank you so much, ma'am. Did you find in the literature anything related to adulteration of the food products and the milk and its relation to early menarche? I've seen some families stop taking milk and milk products. So was, what was your observation on this? Madam, this is a problem in, in uh, Western world, especially in United States, where the, uh, I mean, apart from milk, the cow is essentially, or the buffalo is essentially used for production of meat. So in order to increase the bulk, plenty of hormones are pumped into the animal, especially... I didn't find any point on that in your presentation. But I think now we have plenty of milk from the government sector. All our dairies are controlled by the government. And you, unless we assay milk, milk does contain all the female hormones. It is important to understand that. So estrogen and progesterone, and gonadotropins can be secreted in milk. So it is important to understand that. That is one of the reasons in the Western world for an early menarche. If it occurs before nine years, now in, at least in the Scandinavian countries, they are calling it early menarche. So that is supposed to be the reason for the uh, early menarche in Western world. So, but I believe the Indian practice of boiling milk before consumption not only reduce the incidence of bovine tuberculosis, but it also destroys all the hormones. So that is one of the advantages of boiling milk. Did you find any factor covered in your questionnaire? That's why I raised it. Thank you for your question, ma'am. Ma'am, you'd be very happy to notice the questionnaire given to you with, along with the, our proposal con considers a question, how many times do you consume milk a day? We also have data statistics to prove that point. We did not include it in our con conversation because it was in, uh, in addition to business. What was the finding and what was the, was there any apprehension? Did any mother or any family ask you on that? That was my question. I'd like my colleague to answer this. I would like to add to this that uh, definitely uh, people, 
they have got no significant reporting on milk and milk products specifically because they thought that that is vital for human development. Uh, though we know that uh, milk and milk products when in injected with endocrine disruptors are harmful, but yet there is no significant study that proved milk. No, ma'am, not our study also did not prove any such finding for now. Endocrine disruptors are slightly different. Yes, sir. Sure. If you use a pesticide, herbicide, insecticide, larvicide, molluscicide, or pesticide, those in the human body, there is no way the body can detoxify them and excrete them. It will take us another thousand years to develop an enzymatic system for that. So they stay in the human fat. And in the human being, they act as endocrine disruptors. Essentially, they function as estrogen. Okay, so that is why they are called endocrine disruptors. You can measure the volume and the parts per million of each one of these insecticides. We did it in deceased patients, but not in milk. For example, we did a case control study where we analyzed 26 groups of such environmental toxins. Yes, you can demonstrate them in a higher degree in people with certain types of cancers. The government asked us not to publish it, so we refused to publish. We were prevented from publishing it because that data is very harmful to the agricultural sector. Yeah, very much of knowledge sharing is going on. My concern is uh, psychological maturity is very important to attain menarche. That was your whole presentation. So basically, it's not the physical cause which is causing, and it's not a disease we are talking about. It's a physiological process with a psychological maturity. So where the problem is? So uh, you have done so many scales, but nothing relevant to any specific psychiatric disorders. Why? You said there is a psychological scarring, 26% have this much of problems, but nothing specific to any psychiatric disorders. Why? You would have, if you have done, you would have depicted in a better way. You have only uh, reported about these, these many causes, this much thing and all those things and adaptivity what they do. But what about psychiatric disorders which can cause early menarche? Because I get cases in child psychiatry department Nilofer, what happens to them? If you have done that, it would have a better option. Next time probably you can do it. Nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Very nice and confident presentation by your team. Uh, one thing I would like to ask about the statistical aspects. It was mentioned that p-value you have mentioned. What test have you used for that? Thank you for the question, sir. We use SPSS software for calculating the p-values. Software is OK, ma. Which test did you use? Test. Uh, to get the p-value, you have to use one test. Which yes. test did you use for that? Uh, uh, I, I don't actually remember that test because I took help of a satisfaction with this. I'll definitely look at it. Sir, I would like to add to my colleague, we conducted these questionnaires by our questionnaire, pre-tested, pre semi-structured questionnaire. We used Cochrane formula, so because our data was, our data sample was huge. So we used Cochrane formula to calculate our size. Yeah, yeah. Once you calculate your sample size, you will come up with some Excel sheet, right? Then you, to, you are comparing between two groups, right? So then you have to use some statistical text of significance, like chi-square or t-test or something like that. So I was asking, what did you use for that? Thank you. Thank you. It depends upon whether you are comparing two parameters or more than two. So for multi-parametric tests, you will use something else after you normalize the data. Normalization is a process where the sample sizes are different. One is five, the other is 500. You can't compare both of them. So that requires a normalization. So there the test of significance or statistics is completely different. Whereas when you have two groups which are equally matched, there it is straight away student T test you can do.